And hey everyone, we're back with another paint cast. I got Eric on air with me and I've got his death jack here in pieces in front of us. So why don't you say hi to everyone, Eric? How's it going? So we've had you on already twice um, talking about uh, this guy here, right? Asphyxius. Oh, one second, I'm sorry, I'm getting reverb. There we go. Yeah, make sure your, your volume's off on the paint cast side. Yeah, I got you. Awesome. Sorry. So yeah, so we've had you on already with, with Asphyxius, and uh, we've, I've worked a little bit on Denegra for you, and you can see kind of where I was at with her last, uh, last week. I got all the skin pretty much laid out, working some purples in there, and uh, we're going to keep working on her. And, uh, but tonight, what I wanted to do is start Death Jack with you, and uh, get this beast primed, and, and uh, kind of get that, that process going. So I've got the pieces of him here. He, th this is a huge model, Death Jack. <laughs> uh, I mean, and, and this, this solid mass of white metal here in my hand, I mean, it's, it's heavy, you know. So, um, you know, this is a big, this is a Im big, impressive model. It's got a ton of detail on it. And really, the best way to, I, I feel personally, the best way to, to, to paint a model like this is you got to do it in pieces. Um, otherwise, you're going to miss details, and you're not going to be able to, to get into it as much as you as, as much as you want. Um, and I can already see right here, little mistake that I made. This rib cage didn't uh, didn't sit right. You can see the the angles wrong on it. So I'm going to have to break that and uh, re glue that. But it's something I can do uh, off camera. I don't need to do it right now. Um, but uh, I've I've pinned. Um, your smokestacks on. Here's your second smokestacks. There's already pins there for this guy to go on there. Um, the arms have been pinned in. Um, I mean, it's just this is a this is a big model, and and I kind of played with the hands a little bit to to give them a little bit more of a menacing pose. I, I kind of don't like the uh, jazz hands, uh, Death Jack. Yeah. Um, I've got a pin here on the top uh, for the armor plate here. Um, these are going to get painted and then applied later. Uh, the head will be painted separately. Legs will be painted separately. So just really, you know, um, by keeping it modular like this, it's going to make the job of painting it in a, in, a, in a smooth and clean manner a lot easier. So what I'm going to do tonight is we're going to uh, get the primer put on on uh, this large piece here. Uh, on the body here and on the legs. He's such a big model, Eric, that um, I'm probably going to have to do a, um, a bit of off-camera work on this guy. Uh, just I thought we covered like a lot of the techniques I really wanted to see already. Okay. It's just, like, I kind of wanted to see him getting done. <coughs> okay, okay. And as far as what I'm thinking paint scheme-wise, um, I know that you were saying that you want um, him to look, uh, you, w you want the armor on him to be purple, right? Yeah, I was hoping that, you know, the big plates okay. and stuff like that would be the, the purple color. Okay. The one thing we have to worry about, and this is just going to be honest with you, is we don't want him to look like Barney when we're done. Yeah, that's true. That's true. <laughs> so we have to, like, tone down the purple or something. Well, and... and uh, and I don't know if it's as much of toning down the purple as it is where we place the purple, kind of like what I was talking about in the paint cast before you. Um, you know, okay. where we place those colors are going to go a long way towards giving us a final product. Um, mm -hmm. I definitely think the, the plate, the top plate here, needs to be purple. Yep. Um, looking at, at him here, I think that um, these big shoulder plates here, mm -hmm. The top ones need to be purple. These bottom ones we could probably do in a in a brass or a gold color. Yeah, we're on the same page so far. Okay, and then I'm thinking that the big hand here, purple, and then this back part here, purple. Yep. And then um, I don't know. I, I I'm on. I'm kind of feeling that the rest of his main body here is just the bolt gun color. Yep. Yeah, yeah, I'm down okay. with that. Okay. Um, the one question was um, that I just got was uh, I'm looking at the death jack I have in my hands. Uh, you know how he has like the inlays on the back of his wrists? 
where you see those like three plates come out. Uh huh. And like, uh, our, oh no, wait. It's only the first one that has it. Never mind. Never mind. I'm, I'm blind. Okay. I was, I was thinking about how like, I thought it was like gilded, not so much the vented plate like I see there. Okay. Okay. No worries. And then on the legs, I say we do this thigh plate in purple, um, the hip area here in purple, and um, this plate on top of the feet purple. And then the rest we just do in um, um, uh, the, the uh, go, um, gosh, uh, pig iron. Yeah, pig iron metal. Yeah, I wanted to say gun metal, gun, gu a bolt gun metal. <laughs> Yeah. Wrong, wrong paint line, <laughs> wrong game. When I, went, when I went to go buy my car, it's a, it's a gun metal color, and I almost kept saying like I'm looking for a bolt gun metal, and they would just look at me like I was crazy. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I still have a slip like that every now and then. And then we were talking about 40k stuff before we got on air too, so that that didn't yeah. help. Unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, let's get these three pieces here. Get some uh, primer on them, and then also get your purple going on them. Let me just uh, finish cleaning this out here real fast, rinsing this out. Uh, while you're doing that, how do you ship something like that? Like when it's all assembled and stuff like that. <laughs> uh, Eric, I f when, when you first said that, I thought you asked, how do I shit something like this? Oh, no, 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 my bad. My bad. <laughs> Now, how do you how do you mail something like this to a client? <laughs> Hands like that, very painfully. Um, yeah, hey. <laughs> yeah, I don't even want to think about that one. To be um, what I do when I ship uh, minis out, especially big ones like this, um, I go to the craft store, you know, like a Joann's Fabric, and they sell the memory foam there, you know, uh, per per yard or whatever. And I just buy a big roll of it that's like thirty dollars, and it lasts me, you know, for several, several dozen miniatures, you know. And uh, I'll just take a, a an electric uh, carving knife, and just cut kind of a generic shape into the foam. Place the mini in the foam, and then put another piece of foam on top of it, and kind of sandwich it together. And uh, that's how I ship it. And so far, I haven't had any issues with that. Everything's arrived safely. Nothing's broken. Nothing's been chipped, and um, you know, it's it's all looked really well. So, so yeah. So so it's um, that's how I do it. Yeah. When I was sending, like, I was kind of baffled by how do I get this there, and uh, apparently there was some changes from what I remember, but nothing too horrific. Right. So just just applying the black primer right now, and I am going to put it on a little more opaque than I was on the uh, previous model because this is a lot bigger of a model. Um, so there's less detail to lose here. Okay, got a nice solid coat there. And let's get these legs done here. enough on that one and now the big one here oh and by the way um, one of the things I was thinking on these uh, shoulder skeletons here uh, I'd actually like to paint those white like actual skull actual skulls oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's actually what I was uh, hoping for okay cool yeah. cool because they actually are big dumb skulls so I was like yeah <laughs> all right
I don't know if you wear gloves when you br when you airbrush, but uh, I've started doing it lately, and I much prefer the clean hands when I'm done. Yeah, when I when I have when I'm at home, I do it because I feel my dad's like like extra gloves or like like you know like it's both the gloves. Right. But when I'm in high school, I, if it happens, if I have them nearby, so be it. What are you studying? Uh, uh, I'm a marketing business student, and then uh, I'm about to pick up an economics minor to take two more two more classes. That's cool. Yeah, I'm, I'm, there's no way I can get around being a super senior. <laughs> my major, I was originally going for air traffic control with the Air Force. Oh, and wow. Did, uh, did the big budget cuts, and uh, even though I had like a 3.9, I got stopped, and it was like, uh, I was like, hey, I can still, you know, pay for my school, so we get whatever, just, can I keep the permission? And they were like, that's not how this works. We're not paying for your school. You don't get the permission. Oh. Like, well, that, that's unfortunate. <laughs> that sucks, man. Yeah, so whatever. You know what? Everything happens for a reason. Yes, this is true. Everything does. One of the things I'm going to be wor a little worried about with Death Jack is um, these chains hanging off of his hands. I've never seen a Death Jack keep them for a <laughs> long time. It's... The way I saw someone keep them was like he made them part of the base. So like they were like he glued them to something. But, uh, That's one way to do it. Yeah. The um, I would say like the favorite thing I had about my old Death Jack, the one that that got obliterated, was um, instead of putting the soul in his chest, I had reposed him so he was like holding a Signar trencher. Or the, the Signar trencher risen. Like have you ever seen the Alexia Risen unit? Uh huh. Yep. And uh, the soul was coming out of its chest like he was like. Soul, like sucking it or something like that. But it, it just, I really like that model, and I wish it didn't get broken. With it. That's too bad. Yeah, I'll try. You know, I was thinking after I get better at painting, watching these cats over and over, and I already feel the difference. To be honest. Good, good. I may try my hand at another one after I get this play piece. That way, you can get thrown apart. You know, I want to see that conversion, even though it's painted and everything. It puts them in such an awkward pose. I bet it does. He's so fragile that you can't move him, really. Yeah, I bet it does, yeah. So I'm just kind of uh, rinsing out the uh, last of the primer here. And we'll get onto your purple color. And the base coat is um, Hexed Lichen from Vallejo Game Color. Get this mixed. And I went back and wrote down all the paints we used and everything like that. And uh, up to this point, in ones I didn't have, when we ran to the store earlier today and grabbed them. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to this. Well, cool, man. I'm, I'm glad you're getting something out of it. I mean, it. You know, this is this is really what it's all about for me. Is you know, I. I I want to share what I know, you know, I, I want to help people be better painters, you know, and um, when I get that kind of feedback and I hear that, it just, it, it lets me know I'm doing it right, you know. Yeah, we're, our uh, story week for the store uh, has a pretty big prize, and I'm like, I, I put it in the rough week, you know, you don't win them by fighting them by painting and stuff like that. Right. Figure it out. No time with the present, and I'd rather not look like I machine gunned out fifty brothers and thirty paint nights. So I think it's in the league. I want to look like. Right. Right. I think I remember talking about that last time we were we were on. Yeah. Okay. Nice solid coat there. This is just the base color. Uh, we're going to do some shadows and some highlights here in just a second. <clears throat> yeah, and I, I apologize to you too, Eric, that I'm coughing in your ear here. I don't know, man. Like, I'm just it and seeing them all come together. Is 
is that just the uh, flat axe lichen, or is that a, uh, a mix with the little and purple at this point? Nope, it's just the regular hex lichen, straight, okay. straight hex lichen. And then what I'll do is I'll apply the shadow color with the mixture of the um, beaten the purple, the sanguine, sanguine and, and yep, yep, yep. Because I figure after watching you do this, I'll watch it one more time by myself and, you know, pause and rewind and all that stuff and then do my nightmare. Yeah, and, so. and you know... Um, if you have questions as you're as you're going along, make sure and email me. And also, you know, part of what you pay for when you do these paint casts is is that extra Google chat time with me. You know. Yep. So make sure and take advantage of that. Mm-hmm. It's all in the fine <laughs> Yeah. There you go. <laughs> okay, that looks pretty good there. And then the big massive metal over here now. This is the model that made me fight Greg's, to be honest. I think it's a great looking model. Uh, I, I I think I like Nightmare better though. I was, I was gonna say I think I like the look of Nightmare better. Yeah, yeah, because he looks more like the other Jacks. I didn't even know anything about what the but I saw that Jack. And I was trying to think, like, how can I make this into a dreadnought? And I was still, like, you know, in that phase. And then I realized I played a demo game with War Machine. And I was like, this feels like an actual game. Like, tell me about this faction. Right, right. Yeah. So, never looked back. Tell you, I, I sure like that new Denegra model. Yeah. Um, Doug Hamilton and I, you know, we go back and forth every now and then. He, he was messing around with me at Warmish Weekend, trying to get me to fade out and I didn't like his sculpt. But I didn't know who he was. So he was trying to get me to say how bad some of the models he's done are, right? Right. But uh, after, you know, going through his test, and I was like, I don't know what you're talking about, man. I think, you know, Gorge 3 looks amazing. And stuff like that. He was like, all right, all right, yeah, you're pretty cool. We can, we can put something out. Because I was trying to figure out what the uh, con spoiler was going to be. In that case, it was the uh, ah. the lighted Thagarash, uh, the, the painter. Right. The painter. Th Thagarash the painter, yeah. Yeah, and now it's the uh, root drops. Mm hmm. So when I built when I built my death track, right, like I remember that chest is kind of hollow. So right. Like the two holes in the shoulder plotted. Where where did you pin that? Um actually the, the shoulders aren't pinned through the body. Um it's the okay. the arms that are pinned into the shoulders. Oh the arms are pinned into the shoulders. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um I I really will only pin if I think the joint is fairly weak or, or not strong. Um, but this is actually a pretty secure joint, so I'm not I'm not too worried about it. Okay. I don't I don't think anything's gonna break off. Yeah. It's always the smokestacks and it's always the chains. Right, and, and that's why I did uh, pin the smokestacks. All right, that's a, that's a pretty good coat of purple there. So I think we can set him aside now. And let me just take a look at this plate, make sure we're still, that coat is still looking good. Okay. And now, uh, now I want to get the uh, shadow color going. So let me clean this out real fast.
And remember this shadow color is a mixture of the sanguine base, coal black, and beaten purple at about a one to one to one mixture. Okay. Um, I got the length save for the dropper bottles you use. Uh huh. Do those hold almost the whole P3 jar? They, they do. Yeah, yeah. They, they do. They, uh, you'll have a little bit of waste, but. Um, yeah, I'm not sweating that over the convenience of the, uh, the dropper bottle. Yeah, you're not going to have much, though. I mean, it's, it's pretty. Um, it, it'll hold quite a bit. I'm just because I used to try and buy like exclusively the Lighthub. Uh huh. That's so the dropper bottle, but I figured you know, I might as well take the jump because I love some of the P3 colors and how there's really no like duplicate for them, but the cold black and stuff like that. Oh yeah, the P3 colors are fantastic, man. And they think <coughs> Say again? The, the liquid pig, uh, pigment. Yeah. They just mix so well and they keep forever. Yeah, yeah, they, they do. They, they, they're they they're a quality paint. Mm -hmm. It blew my mind when my friend pointed out that they were uh, privateer pressed paints. So P3 is P to the third power. And I was like, whoa. <laughs> what's that? What's that meme with the guy at the in the club with yeah. that? Yeah. Aliens. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Nice. So this um, this top shoulder or top armor plate is really kind of the uh, um, going to be a central uh, piece for the model. You know, that's where the eye is going to kind of be drawn to first. So we want to make sure and and shade accordingly and highlight accordingly. We don't want to. Um, get too crazy with the shadow. We don't want to get too crazy with the highlight. We just want it to look nice and, and easy and smooth and let the eye just kind of naturally be drawn to it. So when you're applying your shadow on this piece, sorry for the bump on the camera there, you want to kind of think about this armor plate in the sense of, of it being almost like a ball, okay? Um, the center part there is what's going to be closest to us, so that's where your highlight's going to be. It, it's almost kind of like how you can see the light sitting on it right now. Okay. Um, okay. You know, you're going to have a shadow down here in the bottom and a little bit on the edge kind of coming up and then maybe a touch back up here. But for really, for the most part, the rest of it's going to be the base color. Okay. And so you just want to slowly build that, that shadow up. And not uh, not get it too overpowered. That's about as much as that's going to, sh we're going to shade that. You see, not much at all. Just kind of keeping it nice and, nice and smooth. But I'm going to put some shadow back in here on, on this plate. And then on the legs here, I'm just going to kind of spray the shadow color from the bottom here. shadow there. 
And once the um, once the gunmetal color gets on here too, it really you'll start to really see a lot more contrast, and it'll, things will pop a little better. When you uh, glue the model together, uh, do you ever get that like white? I don't know if the well, what I can describe like that white residue that forms after gluing the model together. No. Around the, the fumes. Yeah, no, I, I I've never really gotten that. Um, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, I know what you're talking about, and I, I think the reason why is I, I tend to use the, the super glue pretty sparingly. Okay. Yeah. And from the hands here, this is just going to be from the bottom. And then slowly pull that up. And same on the other side here. See how that's starting to look, starting to get some shadow there, starting to get some definition. And now we want to start building the highlight up. What are those you have them on, like the little sticks? Uh, toothpicks. Just, just toothpicks? Okay. Yeah. It's hard to tell, like, scale, like, yeah. on the camera, whether it's some kind of, like, art design type thing. Yeah, it's, um... Yeah, it's just uh, just toothpicks. And to be honest, um, once I get the um, silver done on the legs there and on the body, I'm probably going to glue him to the legs and then finish it out from there just because the, the toothpick's not holding very well. Do you just have him like, sitting on it, or is it glued in lightly? Uh, no, it's, he's just sitting on it right now. It's wet, wet, It's just wedged up in there pretty good. I, I drill a hole and then insert the toothpick. So the toothpick is like, like a very tight fit to the hole and then... Right. Yeah. yeah. So shout out to my friend Matt in the chat. Just figure I'd do that. Oh, no worries, man. Was he the one you were telling me about? Uh, no, it's a different friend. Okay. This one, uh, he's the one who got me into this whole hobby in general. He's kind of drifted out of it for a time. Right. But so like, it happens. I don't think can blame him. Yeah, it happens. It happens. This this hobby can suck a lot of time. ready here and for the highlight we're just going with straight warlord purple and we're just going to be real soft with this highlight Eric we don't want to we don't want to be too crazy with it because um, then it's going to look pink and we want to still keep the purple look going here um, a little while ago we talked about uh a sonic cleaner. Uh-huh. Right? How much do those run? I haven't even looked. Uh, I think the one I use is from Harbor Freight for like 30 bucks. Oh, okay, yeah. So, uh, kind of in the range of yeah. Throw 20 of the 30 nights in there soon. Yeah, yeah. But let that go.
Okay. And that's probably going to be your highlight right there. Looks pretty good. Okay. And then on the legs. See how that looks? That's turning out okay. Will it be difficult to get his little chest sole thing in with the? Uh, no, I, I've got to, I've got to break this piece off and reglue it, which isn't going to be a big deal. But I've drilled a hole into his chest, um, and if you look at his sole that I, I've got here, <coughs> it's already on a pin. So I'll just cut the pin and put it right in. Yep, yep. All right. I'm just building this highlight up very slowly and very lightly. Did you see the uh workout women that they just done today? The Zertova and her yeah, that that looks uh, that looks pretty good, man. Yeah, I can't tell if she works for Kador or Hydra. Yeah, <laughs> nice. Yeah, it, uh, uh, I like seeing the the Doom Reaver guards. It's uh, pretty cool. Yeah, I'm excited for a lot of Kador. But uh, we were joking around that you know every faction has that one captain that's super cool that everyone loves and wants to be made into. And Kador has like three of them. So, yeah, strong, strong. Strong war casters are not Kador's uh, strength. I mean, but they got they got the, they got Vlad, they got Sorsha, who are pretty kind of like you know ball busting at times. But right, I mean, they don't have like a, a Denny one, Denny two Arbinger. No, they sure don't have that. But you know, outside of uh, outside of Menoth, no one has Harbinger. You know. Oh yeah, that's a she's a thing on her own. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, we've been. Uh, I was talking to a buddy of mine, and he was telling me some of the things that you know playtesters have saved us from, like in their original renditions. And I just want to throw up when I hear it. Like, wow. Uh, originally, Morvana one, uh, Morvana two. I mean, you know her reroll thing. Uh huh. It could only affect enemies, and was just one point of health all the time. Oh jeez. Yeah. Uh. The Bradigus theme force was actually worse. Wow. Where it was um, tier three was he gets the three units of stones, and then tier four was black clads FAU. Oh, jeez. That was. So it's like. <laughs> what do you do against that? <laughs> yeah, that would be that would be painful, man.
That would be seriously painful. <laughs> so I'm just base coating uh, Denny's uh, cloak here real fast. I figure why I've got some of the color already mixed up. Yeah. Time to get it done. And um, let's look, take a look at two at the rest of the bits here. The head, um, I'll probably paint. I'll probably paint this lower section of the horns here, and then yeah. just the head right there, purple. I'm thinking, but I'll do that by hand. Um, these will be a brassy, copy co coppery color. Uh, the sole will be green, which we've already talked about. And then the um, skeletons on the shoulders, those are going to be white. So, so that's yeah. how he's going he's gonna to finish out. Um, Can we, um, on the skeleton heads, the eyes, uh, I was going to <coughs> blow? Or sure, I can do that. And, uh, I was hoping for that. Yeah. They're like what gives him the extra focus. Yeah. So it would be magical and such. Yeah, sure. We can we can do that. Yeah. So from uh, from here on out, um, I'm just going to be adding uh, painting the um, the silver by hand, and um, get getting that all knocked out. Um, so as far as uh, Death Jack goes, though airbrushed wise, I think I've done all the airbrushing I need to do on him. Um, give you one more look here. So there's the body. Yeah. Okay. And then here's that armor plate that's going to sit right on top. And I think he's going to be pretty, uh, pretty impressive. He's definitely not going to look like Barney. Awesome, man. Thank you so much. I yeah. I love this no end, and you're doing it justice. So. Well, good, good. I'm glad you're glad you're happy with it. Um, as far as where we'll go from here, um, I'll shoot you an email in a few days. And um, we'll get, uh, um, you know, we'll, we'll decide what we're going to do next on air and uh, between Denegra, Asphyxius, and Death Jack. And um, you'll get, the, get that all figured out. So, um, but in the meantime, what, what, what other questions do you have, Eric? Um, nothing really. I mean, I was just hoping, um, like, in the future, as I all along, like, uh, I plan on getting these drugs done in the next few days, if I can just shoot you a picture and you can give me some, like, critique or whatever, I feel that would be good. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Other than that, we're good, I think. Okay, cool. Well, if anyone in the, the chat has any questions they want to ask, um, now's the time to do it. Um, I'm going to be taking another quick break here in a second um, and setting up for the next, uh, the next paint cast. Um, but... Uh, you know, I'm glad this is all working out for you, Eric. Oh, uh, Denegra on her skin tones. What did you think with how those finally turned out? Um, I went back and watched the video, and I really liked it. It had that. It, it was just blue enough to where you could see it wasn't like a white skin tone, but the fact that it was so pale makes it look like she's dead, like she is, and I think that really fits what I was hoping to get. Okay, cool. Cool. So I'm glad you're you're digging that. As far as the rest of her goes. Yeah, that's just going to be all base coated in in the gunmetal. Oh, yeah. I remember what my one question about her was. Sure. What uh, What are you thinking the top of her like head dress is going to be, like above the purple mask? Yeah, so the the mask will be purple. I'm thinking that um, the these sides here are going to be gunmetal. This is going to be kind of a brassy color. I'm thinking, and then we're going to do gunmetal here on the tops of these horns with brass on the bottom. Okay, that works out well. Yeah, so we'll we'll kind of play with some metals tones on her. Her her pauldron on the shoulder here will probably be a brassy, goldy, coppery color as well. Awesome. So, okay. Yeah, yeah. So um, we'll go ahead and, and call it there, Eric. I will be contacting you in a couple days, and we'll we'll sort out the rest of the details. And uh, for those of you watching live, just hang tight, and I will be back in about five minutes. Uh, after I've reset here and uh, got my next uh, next customer on, uh, but Eric, it was good working with you tonight, and we'll see you. Uh, we'll ch we'll chat with you soon, okay? All right, no problem. Man. Thank you very much. All right, take care, man. We'll see you.